So we have a client who is in a condo building and they have a, um, a door that leads out to a car parking area. It's an exterior wall, but in this condo building, the door had been removed years ago. Well, they've replaced the door because the fire inspector said they needed to put a door there that was fire rated. Okay, the client wants to have the door hold open and the architect supplied them with the typical uh, integrated uh, ionization detector, you know, holder-closer combination. Well, those work great. They're generally really expensive though. And I've proposed an alternative solution which would basically include a Rickson ionization detector and then a Rickson electromagnetic door holder. And this door opens up to be parallel to the wall perpendicular to the door. And there's a two inch face on the hollow metal frame. And the question that I have to provide an answer to is how far from 90 will the door hold open when the electromagnetic holder is installed on the wall and on the back of the door. And it's a fire door. So the function of the fire door is to be closed and latched. And I don't know why specifically in code, it's not a path of emergency egress, so I don't know why that ultimate degree of opening needs to be determined, but it was decided let's determine the degree of opening of what that would actually be. So it'll be an easy task in AutoCAD. So let's uh, switch to the screen view and I will show you what we're working with. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Okay, let's start off with looking at the um, holder, and here it is. Well, here's the holder that we're going to consider using, the 997. So let's take a look at what its dimensions are. And for that, I'm just going to open up a Rickson catalog because I know that it will be actually in the catalog. And I believe it's two and three quarter because I had looked yesterday. Uh, two and five eighths nominally is what it is. Now the question is going to be is will the client be able to uh, install this flush? The wiring needs to be inside the wall. I doubt that's going to be the case. So based on the 997, um, will they be able to get the wire, the power to the unit uh, in some other means or from some other path because surface mounting it is going to lead us to a much greater dimension required, such as the 996M, and that's going to be uh, four and an eighth is what that's going to be. So let's first draw something at two and an eighth for the 997, and let's see, let's see what happens. Now here's the client's application. Here are some images. This is the fire door that they've put in. It already has a closer on it, so an ionization detector and a electromagnetic holder will allow the client to reuse the existing closer, showing me a label of the door. Uh, the ingress side of the opening is here, as you can see. Going to want to swing that door out and place that holder over here. Their current means of holding it open. Not UL listed, that bungee cord. You know, and it looks to me that there's going to be lots of room here. So if emulating this 85 degree or so is going to be acceptable, then, then so be it. I also asked the client for an image of the latch. I wanted to make sure that this uh, set that's on here, and it may be a passage set, is UL listed. It is. That F stands for uh, the fact that it is positive pressure compliant, um, this assembly. So no problem with the latching hardware. The closing device is certainly going to be compliant as well. I suppose it doesn't have to be, but I can see that there's a decal there, and that's what that means. It'll have a listing number on it, a 623R, something like that. Okay, now let's pull up AutoCAD and let's emulate, but before we do that, uh, we are stuck with the 2-inch here. 
Okay, and our vertical axis of pivoting will be in between that eighth of an inch gap that's there. So let's pull up AutoCAD and see what we can do. This is a project from yesterday that I think will just leave, actually. It looks like a nice thing to start with. Let's take that. Let's save it. Now let's modify the original. Um, we'll get rid of the we'll get rid of the door because I know it's the wrong dimension. We'll get rid of the hinge that I've drawn because all we need is a vertical axis of pivoting. Get rid of these artifacts that are here. Um, See if we can um, make this guy a little bit bigger. Yeah, that would be okay, I suppose. Yeah, okay. At least it emulates what we're trying to do. Um, okay, so let's draw... Let's first measure what our distance is. Should It's not really going to matter so much. Yeah... quick. Okay, it's 35 and 7 eighths is what we have here. So what we'll do is we'll take this we'll group that Move it over a little bit that side. We didn't group that. Good enough. Yeah, so it's... Let's move it over one more sixteenth. Close enough. Thirty five point nine nine. So let's draw a door now. Let's line. And what I want to do is start with. Uh, what I want to do is start with. Thirty-five point seven five at one eighty. Point seven five at eighty seven degrees. It's really a little bit bigger than that. That's going to be fine. So thirty five and five eighths or so should work, and it does. 
and we're going to go right to that other corner. Then we're going to group this so that it's an object. Now let's just make sure that we have a reasonable gap here. Yeah, it's a little light on an eighth of an inch, it doesn't matter. And it's like, it's a 48th of an inch light, so we're not going to worry about that. Now, two and five eighths is the dimension, I recall from the wall. Now, the issue, though, is we have three sixteenths here, so I'm going to move the wall right up tight to the jam because the client told me it was two inch. And I know that this dimension here is two inch. Well, I believe it to be two inch. Yeah, two inch. Okay, so that's good. So now, let's give ourselves a point of rotation circle that's going to be thirty six. Um, I'm looking at an origin, a reference to origin, so ignore that. And I think we'll go with 5 eighths diameter for the hinge barrel. Which doesn't really matter because it's going to be the center of that point. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines here just to make sure that we're good to go. With it being pretty accurate. go there. Let's go here. That's going to be our point of rotation. Now, I want to draw a line out here. That's two and five eighths. And that's just going to be two and five eighths off. So, and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to come, I'm going to bring that down because I'm going to want to measure, um, I'm going to want to measure the angle. So when I bring the door up touching this, I'll be able to draw another line and then determine the angle between those two. So let's now rotate rotaire let's rotate let's select our object oh apparently that wasn't grouped let's rotate enter specify your base point right there now let's move it with me one moment. I didn't have the entire object grouped. Rotate, select object, enter, specify the base point. Good. Now let's rotate it. Uh-huh. So, we're good. I mean, that door is going to be at 90 degree. And the reason I know that is because... Wait a minute. No, I have my... No, that doesn't make sense. Let's... Yeah, that should be okay. Let's try that again. R-O-T-T-E... Yeah.
yeah, so we're going to be two and five eighths is going to be in real good shape there um, because where I've got the location of the point of rotation is actually where the barrel of a hinge would lie. The fact that the circle is up, up excessively large just doesn't matter. This is the line that's at two and five eighths, so it's going to be parallel, and in fact, it's going to be. Um, two and fifteen, uh, two and thirteen sixteenths is the dimension. It, it should be the dimension from the edge of the door to the wall distance. It should be two and thirteen. And it's it, it's so close. It's <laughs> it's extremely close to two and thirteen sixteenths, like two and twenty five thirty seconds. So really close. So that's looking good. Now, the question is, is what happens when we have a greater um, uh, dimension required between the wall and the back of the door, which means the Rickson catalog. Let's say that we go with the surface mount, which was the 996, and that's going to be 4 and 1 eighth. So let's go back to AutoCAD. Now let's draw, let's get rid of this line. Let's now make this 4 and an eighth. Make it basically 4 because it's, well, I'm going to make it. Okay, so let's let's now I've drawn a line at four and an eighth. Let's rotate. Let's rotate this. And now this time we're gonna leave turn off ortho. We're gonna leave. We're gonna leave it right about there because you'll need to install you know, the unit's going to be installed back here a little bit, right? So now, let's come up with a line. From the edge of the door, and it's not at 90 degree, but let's come up with a line from here. And let's determine the angle between these two lines. Angle, select arc, circle line, we're selecting that one, select second line, that's 87 degree, that's basically, it's not what I predicted, I predicted it would be a little bit smaller than that, but it's 87 degree, is what is what that would be there. Okay, so I'm thinking that would be fine, because, you know, clear opening is going to be achieved and um, that should be okay if the client can bring power through the wall and use the mortise pardon me the the um, recess mounted that would be fine but they'd have to really chop into that wall that may not be permissible but I'm thinking at 87 degree uh, the client will be in good shape because you know they're they're holding that open somehow, so it might be okay. Awesome. Okay, so let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Okay, once again, popping something into AutoCAD allows us to eliminate the guesswork. Sure, my numbers are going to be off. An extreme tiny fraction but in the field when you're installing door and hardware you're not dealing with 20 thousandths or 30 thousandths of an inch in terms of gaps and margins while those gaps and margins all can add up you know a 16th here is no big deal a 16th here is no big deal but a 16th a 16th and a 16th now you got three 16ths that's a problem but our drawing accuracy in terms of the precision is good enough for what we're doing you know either very slightly less than 90 degree will or it will not be agreeable to the authority having jurisdiction. We've at least arrived at theoretically what we expected to be. If you have any questions on door 
electri electrified door hardware that is either independent standalone with an ionization detector or tied back to a fire alarm panel, which is the point. This opening is not tied back to a fire alarm panel. Please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.